Our next speaker is Dr. Martha Summerman. She is director of the National Institute of Dental and Craniofacial Research. Prior to becoming the NIDCR director, Dr. Summerman was dean of the University of Washington School of Dentistry. An internationally known researcher and educator, Dr. Summerman's research has focused on the biology of dental oral craniofacial tissues, and she has been the recipient of numerous awards and honors. Right, so what I'm going to be doing today is talking about general overview of NIH big data, but very quickly on that, then some of the um, NIDCR big data activities, talking a little bit about some opportunities in training and careers, and then linking it back to precision medicine. Um, in doing this, there's a lot of stuff going on. I'm going to talk relatively quickly about all of this. Um, I thank you. I thank you, the, the organizers, and all of you for joining me. I am passionate about the practice-based research networks, but I just want to move into these topics, and I just realized I forgot to thank everybody for the organization here. Um, one of the things I think you're very much aware of is this explosion, and I think um, in big data from early on in the 1990s, if you think about how simple it was, to now um, in uh, 2016, and this is a quote from uh, Francis Collins, data creation in today's research is exponentially more rapid than anything we anticipated um, even a decade ago. And with that, uh, we hired a uh, new director for this big data initiative, and that was uh, Dr. Phil Bourne. And um, I love to call him, if you want to remember the acronym, I call him an ADDS. He's the um, Associate Director for Data Science, so that's an ADDS. So with this and the recognition of this explosion of how are you going to leverage, store the data, he hit the ground running with um, several um, initiatives and missions, and um, these missions were then put into opportunities for research for the community related to the use of big data, to tools, software, methods, to training opportunities, and also to supporting these centers of excellence. I need to tell you that dentistry didn't put in one grant proposal. However, in the second phase, we did have one in integration and interoperability. And you know that's a major issue for us and a major issue for all of us is the interoperability with um, the recent uh, in, um, in endorsement by, well, by the Secretary of Health and Human Services, Sylvia uh, Burwell, where she secured a pledge from some of the biggest industry uh, players to make interoperability and data sharing a principal priority. So this is a very, very strategic and important area for us. Um, for those of you that are engaged in research, there are funding opportunities. There are new initiatives out there. Um, I think these slides will be made available, and because of lack of timing, I'm not going to go through everything on here, but happy to email me, talk to me. I'll send you to the right people at NIDCR to work you through getting some of these grant proposals in. Please consider them. There are other things at the trans-NIH level. One is a healthcare research systems collaboratory. This is funded through the Common Fund. It's partnering with industry. It's partnering with healthcare insurance companies to be able to use the databases and the resources to probe for research opportunities. Um, the Common Fund, they're currently reevaluating, so it was already in two phases of the Common Fund, and now continuing the database. And stay tuned at this point in terms of the new initiatives in this area, it's not known, but please take a look at this. And the Human Microbiome Project, I think all of you are very familiar with this. We were one of the leaders in the Common Fund Initiative. There's a wonderful oral microbiome database that's available and opportunities through now the NIDCR for further research and funding in this area. So what I'm going to just focus on and talk a little bit about are three areas. So in terms of NIDCR, there's lots going on in the space. I'm going to talk a little bit about the electronic health records, data repositories and uh, cohorts that you can use, as well as training opportunities. So as we already talked about, this interoperability of dental and medical records is a substantial issue. It's one of frustration for all of us. And it's not just medical and dental. 
Integration of medical with medical is an issue. Integration of dental with dental is an issue. And so one of the areas that um, we are currently funding, and just by the way, I don't call out individual people because it's all of you that do the research that really helps and grows things. So I may talk about an area of research, but not individual names. So one that we've uh, recently funded is evaluation of the dental electronic records and the interoperability and feasibility for use in clinical studies. And this is a pilot study. It involves the practice-based network networks. It involves India, Indiana University and also their institute, um, this Regenstrife Institute at Indiana University, related to posterior composites, longevity, and tooth loss following root canal treatment. And this is just to see if they can gather the information, can they gather the data to be able to do the research and they're using um, different uh, software systems for this. And similarly, um, other studies to develop these diagnostic codes, and I know the American Dental Association is working on this, insurance companies are working on this, and yet, how many years later, and we're still having and struggling with issues with this. Optimistic, but it's a long road, and a long road for all of us, and um, especially with the precision um, initiative, precision medicine initiative, and in trying to get this to work. A wonderful area for us, so for NIDCR, we have a lot of data repositories and cohorts and opportunities to use these. So one area is in the clinical registries, networks, and consortia. One is the practice-based network. Head and neck cancer, we have an area related to that. Sjogren syndrome, and also in the area of oral health disparities. Some of these you have to be part of that individual network. I think with the PBRNs right now, it's not sharing outside the PBRN community. Hopefully long term, the sharing will become broader as groups become more comfortable going outside of their space. Um, a lot of cohort studies going on. There's, a bone, there's an Iowa bone development study, and I don't know if many of you are aware of this. We continue to fund and support this because of the richness of this database starting at the age of six years old and now moving into teenage and college uh, years. And these people come back. It's a very strong database, excellent uh, responses from this group. Another area is through our wonderful OPERA, or All Facial Pain Prospective Evaluation and Risk Assessment Study. It's in phase two. It'll probably go into phase three. Wonderful examples there related um, to our pre precision-based initiatives as well. Um, and then there's this multiple institute pediatric HIV AIDS cohort, which not only um, evaluates the perinatal outcomes of HIV, but also the therapies over long term. And then, of course, the NHANES studies that all of the NIH, we help support the NHANES survey studies. And when I was outside in the extramural community, I used this, but didn't realize that NIH was supporting this. And then, of course, related to many of the omics databases from the oral microbiome that I mentioned to the craniofacial area to the uh, DB gap, which I hope many people are using, and of course the, uh, sent the uh, cancer genome atlas, which NIDCR participates with. Some of these are trans-NIH activities. So in terms of um, the training in informatics, that's one of the areas that I've heard from the deans that we need more support in this area. And um, they don't have the faculty in the bioinformatics area. They don't have the faculty when the president or provost of the university says, can you have somebody at the table in big data? Because all universities are really focusing in on this area. We in dentistry often um, are behind. And so there are opportunities out there at many different levels. And uh, one of the things that I sent out to the deans um, and associate deans through the AADR was a list of all the opportunities on campus through the National um, Library of Medicine from fellowships, sabbaticals, to summer <laughs> programs um, at various career stages. So please, um, if you haven't seen that, take a look at that. And we have just about to advertise a program through the Dental Public Health Residency Program that we do house at the um, NIDCR. There are about 17 of these programs across the country. They're public health one-year programs, so you have a certificate so you can sit for the boards. We are extending this to two years, and so it's a two-year program if you get into it, 
where bioinformatics will be the focus. We are partnering with the uh, National Library of Medicine in this area. It makes sense for the public, for the public health re residents because these are frequently the, those groups of individuals that are involved in epidemiology and statistics. And so to, and they embrace big data. And our researchers in the public health area are doing big data research. So I'm incredibly excited about that. Um, I hope you have um, applications from your schools in that area. So then how does this all integrate with precision medicine? And this is just accounting for individual variation. You've heard over and over again, this is a president's initiative, it's an NIH initiative, it's um, Dr. Francis Collins' dream. And so it's an area we've been spending a lot of time on in terms of developing the pilot studies in this area and moving forward. And of course, it doesn't, it's not just about the medical data, it's not just about dental data, it's genomics, molecular variations, environment, nutrition, and lifestyles and behaviors are part of this initiative. So in long term, it, the goal is to have a national research cohort of about over one million individuals. But at this, um, but at this point, it's on a pilot uh, phase study. But one of the important things I wanted to mention in trying to get people to volunteer. So perhaps it's going to be half volunteers and half coming to some private practices and clinical, clinical uh, arenas as well. But one is uh, volunteers who will share their data, their lifestyle information, the biological samples, and being engaged in the process so they have the access to their own data. And one of the things that we're currently in a phase of just evaluating the practice-based network of what will the next phase look at Look, look like, and one of the things that we've heard is that sometimes the patients do not feel that they're actively engaged, that they're participating in the process. And so that's just something that I would like you to focus on and think about um, as you're doing your projects and studies. I, I bet many of you are not aware of the many activities of the NIDCR involved in precision medicine in this initiative. One I've already mentioned in funding the electronic health records. The practice-based network is a wonderful example with over 5,000 um, practitioners, uh, dentists, dental hygienists involved. One area, the, the uh, salivary diagnostics, biosensors and mHealth, oral facial pain and temporomandibular joint area, where we're currently funding some studies in pharmacogenomics including examining individuals with have mutations in enzymes that um, are involved in breaking down receptors associated with the pain pathway. And if those individuals um, would respond better with certain drug treatments than other individuals. Um, and many, many areas down the area. In terms of the biosensors, one of the kind of exciting things is a toothbrush that actually can track the behavior versus a self-reporting um, exam. And with this, we've partnered with Oral-B for this research and funding this research in this area. And then, of course, there's the perio um, biomarkers. So just in closing, in um, looking at this and examining this, it's all about communications and collaboration. And it really ties into the next uh, presentation on uh, learning health systems in terms of the practice-based networks. I think that's very much a group that's involved in that. One of the things that we've just launched is a collaboration with the American Dental Association on bi-directional research. So I look at the practice-based network as one-directional, where it's the dentists in the community that are asking immediate questions related to the practice. And now we need the dental community coming back to the NIDCR with situations where they didn't expect the patient to respond the way they did. So osteonecrosis of the jaw is a wonderful example, recognized by the practice-based network, but also provided an opportunity to launch a research area back at NIDCR and to have expand our research based on areas of unknown. Um, a wonderful other example is in the area of implementation science, and you're going to see some new uh, call for proposals in this area from us. And of course, in the regenerative medicine area, where from the beginning, it requires us to have dentists participating and those involved in research. So it's a wonderful area of opportunities to capture disease earlier, and that's part of the whole part of, I think, the learning um, health uh, systems. So with that, um, I thank you uh, for
providing this opportunity to talk a little bit about NIDCR. Rapid, but hopefully um, you will come back, contact me um, about other opportunities related to big data. So thank you very much.